G'day everyone, so as you may have known, I've had to swap studios from the room that's in here into this room and today this video is going to be giving you a nice tour talking about the upgrades that I've made as of late to the stream and why everything's looking a little bit different. So why don't we check it out? Is the new desk setup that I have got for the streams. So previously you would have noted that in my other studio setup we had two desks. We had my hobbying desk that had all my paints and everything on it as well as also having uh, a monitor mounted to it having to pull across one of these monitors so that you were able to then engage with me in chat. I could see OBS and how all that was working whereas now we've consolidated the computer desk and the hobby desk into this one desk. Now I did buy a frame kit from Amazon for about 360 Australian dollars or somewhere around that, about the 350 mark. Uh, and I bought these pre-done tabletops uh, from Bunnings. It's like the Australian version of Home Depot, you could say. Uh, they're 1800 mil by 405 mil in in width so I've put the two together so that uh, I've actually got an 800 wide desk which is really nice I'm used to having a deeper desk at work with my work sit stand desk which is great now the one thing that is better than my work desk is that this sit stand desk is actually fully automated so I've actually got preset heights as I'm about to show you and so it just goes up on its own to its preset height, which is great for when I'm wanting to stand up and do other content. Uh, if I'm wanting to, if I've got work meetings when I'm working from home, I can stand up during those, stand up doing editing. If I want to stand up and play some video games, I can do that as well off stream. Or if I want to stand up painting, that's something I've been loving doing is starting up the stream with, by standing and doing an hour standing up and painting and all that side of stuff. So we're going to bring this back down. I'm going to show you how the new single desk setup works because I do have to pack up and set up every stream and you can kind of see there's a few things across the back here and so what we're going to start off with, we're going to start off with my mic now. Most of you would have known that I've added the Rode Pod mic to my setup. Uh, I picked it up for about $100. $120 Australian, which is awesome because in Australia it's like $180 value, uh, which was awesome. It has been a great mic to use, even just bass without uh, Wave XLR or Go XLR, uh, using USB plug-in into my PC and doing all the audio setup for it in OBS. But of course, I am looking to upgrade that at some point as well with a Wave XLR. Now, it's on a newer mic arm that I'm just able to pull over when I'm ready and when I'm finished streaming, I just push it back and it's out of the way so that I can still use the rest of the desk, set up my work laptop, do editing and stuff, use my Logitech keyboard and mouse when I'm wanting a game or I'm wanting to do editing as well. But as you'll note in my hobby videos, I do a drop down cam, I do an overhead cam and you can see that it's maybe a bit hidden, but we've got a Logitech stream cam hidden behind here. And so very similar to the microphone, I just pull it up and there it is. It's set up, ready to go for a top-down view over the hobby setup as I'm painting. Uh, I've got the settings all nice and tweaked for that as well and being 1080p, 60fps is probably one of the best upgrades I've made in terms of upgrading the painting setup and I'm looking to upgrade to stream cams across the rest of my setup as well. And so when I'm done doing a stream or anything similar to the mic, I just pull it off to the side, pull it down. It's down there nicely. And then I can put the mic over the top. Yes, it may obscure some of the extremities on that monitor, but at the same time, if I put them low enough, they're all good to go. All right. 
Friday. Now, unfortunately, because I've had to get rid of the computer desk, it means I've lost out on some storage space. However, I've been able to cull through a lot of the stuff that's there and whether that's in the cupboard that's always hidden off stream or I've got these little four by four cubby pieces that my wife was using in this room for her study. Uh, and so I've been able to make use of those without any additional expenditure. You get you get these from Bunnings or Kmart. Uh, Kmart's the Australian version of um, Walmart, for example, if you're in the United States, of course. And so it's got a lot of stuff in here. Because I've had to rearrange what I'm gonna be showing you next, it's meant that things that were in there have had to come down here. So for example, I've got all my Magic the Gathering cards down here with my Commander decks and everything when I play casually in that. Uh, my airbrushing equipment that was stored underneath my hobby desk as well. You know, whether that's D&D uh, &D dice there. Also, uh, my little spray booth, which I haven't done airbrushing in this room yet. I need to figure out how I'm going to do that. But then, and my air compressor for my airbrushing, my airbrush and all that kind of stuff. A bit of business card stuff. Um, then as we come around here, we've got a bit more of the stream side of things. We've got the light box there, which I've recently purchased to be able to use for great photography for miniatures, which has been really nice to use and really interesting to figure out how to use that. Uh, also got a small area where I'm putting the current projects I'm working on. So at the moment, I've got the Redemptor Dreadnought Commission that we've been working on on stream as of late for one of my community members, TJ, uh, as well as some Death Watch veterans there and some parts for the Death Watch veterans as well. In this one, it's more the office supplies area. I do have my uh, gaming controller that I do use uh, if I want to play something like Hades, that is a roguelite. I do prefer to play that on controller, so I've got my red PS4 controller up here that I just plug in when I'm wanting to play with that. And then another small one, I do have a Logitech C920 box that I use to, with my hobby light to actually prop that up a little bit further, as well as my uh, outside of work laptop. The other good thing about this setup is that the desk height, when it comes right the way down, is that there's a little bit of space along the top here. And it can be a bit hard to see, but you can kind of see there's stuff along the top here. So I'm gonna pop this back up. And so what I actually store across the top here is that I've got my wet palette, my uh, painting mat, which is my old mat that I used to have on my desk. Now that we've got the Scotty D49 mat, which is awesome, I love that thing. Um, and I've also got a rotating stand to be able to put miniatures on to do reels or TikToks, all that kind of stuff of finished projects and projects that I've been working on that week, which I'm gonna start doing a bit more now that I've actually got it and I've figured out how to do things with it. And then over this side, of course, got the work laptop and the gear that I need for that when I am working from home. So overall, I really like how this is set up now, of course, Ignore the cable management. I've done the best that I can with it at this point. I do want to get some baskets to put on the back of the desk to be able to put the power boards and everything up there rather than having them on the floor, keep it all nice and neat up there. But of course, only so much money can be able to be spent at once. And so that's going to be an upgrade in the future for this desk. <music> This is what I was just referring to that I've had to do a bit of retweaking with my back Shelby. Now this has been really great to have in the studio ever since I picked it up uh, last year at some point. I can't remember exactly when, uh, probably around middle of the year, but it has been great um, because I've been able to put a lot of stuff in here and have it nice and neat. Very early on in my streams, it was very disorganized in terms of my hobby desk, my hobby space, it looked really mismatched. And so to be able to have it all in one space, nice and cleanly, uh, I really like. Uh, it looks great in my opinion in, in terms of how it sets up now. And so I gotta walk you through what we actually store in it. So on this shelf right here, right in front, we've actually got all the spray cans at the front there that I use for 
any MDF terrain that I've got to work on. I do have a significant amount that I'm trying to get through uh, of the original ITC Urban series. I've still got a bunch of kits up the top there that need to be assembled and everything like that and painted, but I'll paint them before assembly. And then also we've got a bunch of books here. Now these are generally either 8th or 9th edition Warhammer 40k books. Uh, generally I tend to keep two editions worth on the shelf. Then I've also got my D&D books here because I do play in the Dungeons and Gumdrops campaign with a bunch of friends over in the States and Canada, which is always good fun. So I always like storing my books up here. They're easy to grab and pull out to put onto the desk when I'm playing D&D with the crew. The other thing as well, I do have some select books from other editions or expansions, things like Cities of Death from 5th edition, uh, including Armies, Legions and Hordes, produced by Dave Taylor, which is a great resource as a hobbyist if you're looking to streamline your hobby progress and how you do your hobbying projects as well. Can't recommend that book enough. Uh, books like Apocalypse, and I've even got the Lord of the Rings strategy battle game rule book of the most recent edition called the Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game. Uh, below that, I've actually had to move the paint racks with the paint brushes and all that there. Had to really simplify down what is actually on there so that now there is just all of one color that I have of everything. And then I've got a small paint storage solution right here where one of the shelves has got all the extra paints that are duplicates of what I've already got in the rack, all nice and stored. They're also got empty pots there that I use for putting my miniatures on and such as well. Next to that, up the back here, we do have our undercoats, which is whether that's army painting uniform gray, chaos black from uh, Games Workshop, Lead Belcher as well. Uh, I've got Dull Coat there, simple green, basing materials there, PVA glue. A lot of stuff that's easy to access is kind of the main idea with that. Then right on the end, we've got two bits boxes full of gear that is from my Space Marines, my Death Watch, uh, some Chaos Demon stuff, some Tower stuff, a whole bunch of other things in there as well. But it's great to have it all in the one space. Now, up on this layer here, we do also continue all the hobby section stuff of stuff that I more need on a regular basis, whether that's clippers, glue, knives, files, the projects that I'm working on currently, a smaller magnetized bits box that I use when I carry to events or when I'm out playing games at my local store and I need to use uh, different weapon loadouts that I haven't actually got on the miniatures in storage, uh, as well as a trade that is currently full of miniatures that I'm currently working on, whether that's projects that I've already finished, such as my Necrons or my Death Watch uh, guys that are there, but also all the projects that I want to be working on in the future as well. They're there gathering a bit of dust, um, but also I don't have the storage space for them yet, so that's something I'm wanting to get is some more cases, some more foam to be able to store those in. Then if we go and we look right up the top, we've actually got a couple of box sets that I need to be working on, which is both the Hobbit Strategy Battle Game starter set and the Lord of the Rings Battle for Pelennor Field starter set. We've got a whole bunch of books right next to it, which is all kind of my like hobbying journal. It's got my business book that I use for when I go to tournaments, all the notes that I make in there for those events and any other like commissions that I work on, I'll be making notes in there you know, uh, a blank page book that I use for sketching out ideas of whether that's banners or just t primary ideas for videos, note taking, that kind of thing there. Uh, you know, it's got the iPad stand, the iPad sitting up there currently, as well as a clipboard that I do take with some loose leaf pads for when I go to events and take notes down on, or I chuck the tournament sheets on there to fill out scoring for the tournament players when I'm getting their scores from them. So we've got the Jolt Games Gabriel Angelos miniature that I won from one of the leagues uh, a year or two back and I've still got to paint that up on stream which is a promise to the owner that I would be doing that at some point so we'll be busting that guy out. It's an awesome bust of a miniature and it's really nice and I'm keen to actually start working on it at some point as well. Right next to it, we've got boxes of miniatures that we've finished as well as uh, some of the old starter set boxes that I do use to hold bits and pieces of more relevant projects. So things like uh, sprues that are cut down and weapon options put into plastic bags, I chuck them in those, I label them, have them all up there, as well as the boxes of finished products that I've been assembling or painted, for example, the Primaris Tech Marine, the Infiltrators in Curses, all that kind of stuff, the Vanguard Vets are all up there with the three Redemptor Dreadnoughts. And I also have 
the ITC urban terrain stuff hidden behind there as well. As we get down below here, we'll see that my actual magic decks are all down here. Over in the storage was actually all the loose cards from the various sets that I've got there. So I've got the majority of my commander and now technically modern decks uh, because they've all rotated out. As well as then the shelves right next to it, the other four shelves that I've got are all tech. So it's whether it's ethernet cables, power cables, uh, mo extra microphones, so my first microphone that I had uh, using is stored in there, all those kind of things that I no longer need, but I might need to pull out in case of a backup uh, situation. They're all nice and handy. They're all sorted, ready to go. Then as we come right down to the bottom, it's where I store a lot of my miniature cases. So we've got the, the Battle Foam, we've got the Pack 1520XL, the Pack 720, the Pack Plus. So that is a lot of storage. We've got some extra foam trays sitting out of that because they don't fit in the cases. Then we've got a couple of GW cases there. One's that's the double army case that's got the two sides of foam and three smaller cases that I also use, whether that's for the Necrons, the Death Watch, or some of the Lord of the Rings miniatures that I own. And so then we've got the massive green box right beside the cases, which is for all the tournament gear that I need to be able to take to events to do live coverage of them, as well as stuff from the main setup that I need to take monitors, the mic, some of the cameras and stuff as well, so that I'm able to give you guys the best Warhammer 40k live coverage experience from Australia with the event PC that is a little pocket rocket with a 1660 Super, a 10 series CPU, 32 gig of RAM, terabyte hard drive. It is, a, it is built to be able to run an event in such a small package and do really well uh, in short, sharp efforts. And I love using it. It is such a great PC to have. And shout out to PLE Computers down in Victoria for hooking me up uh, last year. When I went to them, they were able to help me out getting it all sorted with what I was after for this PC. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I really hope that you've enjoyed this bit of an insight into the stream room setup. Now, of course, there's gonna be other upgrades that I'm gonna add onto or into this room like of course with my first child on the way with my wife i do also have to soundproof the wall that is directly behind the camera as that the room that i was previously in is going to be the nursery that's why i've had to move over and in here and make these updates uh as well as i've got a photo that i want to hang up on this wall right behind me that's a nice big artwork that i got when i was about 12 years old that I haven't hung up for a while, so I really want to be able to do that. And just tidy things up in here a bit more, streamline the cupboard quite possibly, um, figure some other things out and get things going. But if you did enjoy this video and you want to catch some of my actual live content, make sure to come by over onto Twitch when I do stream. Whether I'll be here at the setup doing hobby streams and looking at tournaments and such, or whether I'll be at tournaments doing live coverage with a lot of the gear that is set up here currently, or whether we're doing live games, whether that's here in my house or whether that's at my local game store at Jog Games, which we do from time to time as well. And also, if you do enjoy this video, feel free to hit that like. If you have any comments about what your favorite part of the new setup is, feel free to let me know down in the comments section below. And if you want to catch more content like this or other Warhammer 40k content, make sure you hit that subscription button. Turn on that notification bell so you're notified as to when more content is published. But ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one.